Okay. We will kick this off. Um, our medical mission, as I mentioned, is going to be presented by our VP of Medical Application, Mary Beth O'Connor, and um, Pascal Biosciences CEO, Patrick Gray. We're shifting gears a little bit. We obviously talked a lot about product development, um, but we're, we're going into another initiative we kicked off earlier this year. Um, we entered into agreement, a research agreement with Pascal Biosciences. This came after some preliminary testing between the two groups. Um, so Mary Beth and Patrick Gray are kind of going to go through that and what our goals are to achieve this. Um, we're honored to be working with medical researchers of Pascal Bio Biosciences, especially Patrick Gray and his team. Uh, the company develops drugs for for the treatment of cancer, autoimmunity, and infectious diseases. They are the best of the best, and working with them, we hope to move the industry forward as a whole and learn a lot more about CBD, other cannabinoids, and um, and our our solution as well. So I'll let Mary Beth take it from here and uh, tell us all about the medical mission. Great. Hi, Diana. Thanks so much. And I'm really glad to be part of this um conference. So thank you all for hanging around for something that um, we hope to connect the dots and show uh, why it makes a difference to all of you as clients. So um, uh, it's, so the mission of our medical applications of source is to use our emulsion technology to improve lives and through using safe and efficacious ingredients. And we're particularly using cannabinoids and we're making them available to people using them in a pharmaceutical application. So um, we're open to looking at different people using it in nutraceuticals and testing them in that way as well. But right now our research is fun focusing on um, medical research that's uh, double blind studies. The research that we're doing right now, we're gonna focus on Pascal today and Pat Gray and the amazing work they're doing, but we're also working with other medical providers uh, in the Seattle area right now and looking to expand that to other researchers. We're working on an osteoarthritis study too. Uh, what we're hoping to do in our mission also is to prove the efficacy of cannabinoids. This is the very beginning of research. It's really exciting. And um, we, Pat participated in the third annual um, cannabis derived pharmaceutical conference. So it's, it's really in the beginning stages of looking at what we can do. And globally, we're looking at that. So it, you look forward to seeing lots of stuff coming out. Things are moving so quickly as far as how research will demonstrate, not just but what can happen with cannabinoids, but specifically with an emulsion in these research studies. And um, we're gonna try to talk a little bit too about how this research will impact and add value to you as far as your food and beverage and topical markets. So why does this matter to you? Um, why, why should food and beverage topical brands care about the research? Um, we're creating data points on dosing, mechanism of action, the effects that they have in your body. And this research is gonna be really valuable for years and years to come in looking at pharmacokinetic data on how, how the products are absorbed into your body and what and pharmacodynamic studies in looking at how your body um, uh, uses the cannabinoids and specifically the differentiation of how they use cannabinoids in different forms. So an oil-based product like Epidiolex will perform differently than an emulsion-based product that gets absorbed and digested in different ways. Um, we're con confirming safety profiles. We're looking at do different dosings, heavy dosing. We're looking at animal studies to look at the effect of that. Excuse me. Um, we're, some of these will also appeal to the health and wellness communities. So we're really excited about working with them as this medical research informs that other area. These studies can add value to your products. So as you're looking at the animal study work or the differentiation between different forms of cannabinoids, emulsified powders or liquid emulsions versus oil-based products, you'll understand more about what ingredients will work in your products as well and what the research behind them shows you. And um, Pat, this is a teaser that Pat's gonna talk a little bit about cannabinoids limiting the severity and progression of COVID-19 because they're working in that area and we're really excited to partner with them on this collaborative research agreement, but they're doing this other work, work on, their, on um, 
on a different project in time scale. So, but we're excited and we thought you'd like to hear about what's happening with that as well. So it's to very topical. And um, so why Pascal and um, bringing them today? They have, they are an incredible team of people who work out of the um, business incubator at the University of Washington in Fluke Hall. They have a group of people who have a long history in drug discovery and development at Genentech, Amgen, Icos. They're world class researchers who know to make how to make pharmaceutical drugs. So they've worked on Hep B, interferon gamma, um, Cialis, and they're currently working using um, ca doing cancer projects using either cannabinoids or two of them have uh, were started. One started as a cannabinoid and is a little bit of an analog now. One is a solid cannabinoid project, and then. The, uh, the leukemia project is somewhat different, but these guys really have depth in cancer research. So you, working with them on um, cancer research with cannabinoids is a true honor and a huge learning experience. So um, we think they're top notch. And um, so with that, I would like to have kick this off to Pat Gray, who is the CEO of Pascal. He personally uh, has worked on a variety of these different drugs specifically Cialis. And um, he's just a great guy to work with. And I think you'll be interested in hearing what he has to say. So, Pat, off next to is you. Uh, thank, thanks so much for that kind introduction, Mary Beth. And, and thank you, Diana, also for uh, getting me on this program. Um, I'm, I'm uh, very happy to help describe some of our efforts that are ongoing and also our relationship with, with Source, which has uh, been very beneficial to us. And I think it'll be very beneficial to patients um, as, as we move forward. So um, we, we did a study about a year ago with a few human volunteers uh, just to see how the Source formulation compared with the sesame oil formulation. And the sesame oil is, is exactly the same formulation that's used in Epidiolex by GW Pharma for uh, epilepsy. And we saw a really big difference in the onset of uh, drug. Um, it was about, it peaked at about 20 minutes for the source formulation versus about two hours for, for the sesame oil formulation. So that, that's really important. Uh, it's really great to get your drug on board quickly. Uh, the other big interest uh, when, when you're developing a product is, is whether or not it's safe. And uh, we wanted to look at, at this, how safe these ingredients are. And uh, we, we saw in laboratory-based, cell-based experiments, we saw that the form, source formulation had a much better safety profile than the compounds that were formulated in uh, an alcohol-based formulation. So I'll go over that in a couple of slides, um, get into a little bit more detail. But before that, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about a relationship with Source and, and our goals to try to get a, get a compound into cancer testing. So uh, several years ago, we discovered that cannabinoids uh, work with the immune system to potentially really benefit uh, the recognition of, of tumor cells. So normally the immune system recognizes tumor cells probably on a, on a daily basis. And it recognizes them as they arise. Uh, th there's a complex within, within cells called the major histocompatibility complex and that, that displays bits onto the surface of the cell so that the immune system can recognize if there's any difference between a normal cell and one that's a tumor cell, one that might be infected with a virus or with a bacterium or any kind of pathogen. And the immune system is really effective at killing unusual cells, cells that are tumor cells or infected cells. So it really is, is necessary to, to have that system working properly. And what happens when, when a, what happens when a cell gets, uh, evades that, 
that uh, process, then it then it becomes an invisible to the immune system, and then it, it, it is not able to be recognized and, and eliminated by by the immune system like it normally would be. So uh, a- after many years of study, we we screened for many compounds to see which could reactivate this this whole complex on on tumor cells. And we discovered that there was a specific specific cannabinoid that did the best at this. And so we looked at a lot of different cannabinoids and we sort of settled on a favorite one. And and it's gonna be really important to be able to reactivate this whole interaction between the immune system and cancer cells, Uh, particularly metastatic cancer cells, about 90% of them lose this complex that enables the immune system to, to kill them. So this, this activity has great potential to, to help with uh, some of the best cancer products that are available now. They're called checkpoint inhibitors. They were first introduced, oh, about five or six years ago. Uh, they're currently the most profitable and some of the best uh, anti-tumor agents that are around. So, so checkpoint inhibitors as a class, there's about six different ones. <laughs> Uh, uh, sold about $17 billion uh, in the marketplace last year. The problem with them is that they only work uh, about half the time or even less, depending on the type of tumor that they're used with. So if you had any kind of drug that could increase that, it'd be incredibly valuable. And that's what we think cannabinoids uh, will, will be able to do. And that's why we're partnering to sort with Source to try to get get that whole um, program really into people and underway. Oops, uh, one too many. Did that one? There we go. There we go. So um, this this kind of goes back to our first interaction with Source. Uh, we, had, we had seen previously that uh, in our cell-based assays, when we got to high concentrations of cannabinoids, uh, which were formulated in methanol, we saw that the cells died. And, and even, even uh, if the cannabinoid wasn't present, the high concentrations of methanol didn't really kill the cells. So there was something unusual about the, that mixture. And uh, we, we contacted Source, we worked together on this and, and we showed that uh, even at high concentrations, we saw a really nice effect of this major histocompatibility induction. And that, that's what we're talking about is, is enhancing the immune system. We saw that at, at, high, at really good concentrations of cannabinoids and at high, high concentrations, the case in these, these alcohol-based formulations. So we're, we were really excited about that and, and felt that, uh, you know, we, we should be able to dose at high concentrations in a source formulation that should really be efficacious for cancer patients. So uh, we, we entered into this in, uh, uh, collaborative research agreement earlier this year and uh, we're going to start out by optimizing a cannabinoid formulation for patients. We, we call the cannabinoid that we've chosen PASS 393, and uh, we, we know that we'll be able to get uh, it absorbed uh, quickly and uptake uh, will be good. We, we want to optimize that, so we're currently uh, looking at that right now. When, when we've done that, we'll go into healthy volunteers in a phase one uh, clinical study. This will be complete in about 15 months. And after that, we'll then go into cancer patients that are taking checkpoint inhibitors. And, and we have the potential to develop that as, as co-development partners. So we're really excited about that. And uh, you know, the, the, the combination of a cannabinoid with a source formulation should be really beneficial. Uh, and, and the last thing I'd like to mention is something that uh, we, we've just done in the past few months. Um, when, when the uh, coronavirus uh, lockdown 
became uh, a, a real issue. Our laboratory shut down for several months and uh, we were wondering what we could do to uh, help this, this uh, global pandemic. And so we decided to test uh, a, vari a variety of cannabinoids uh, against the coronavirus. And um, we, we looked at several different cannabinoids. We've, we've identified a, a favorite one. We're continuing this work. Uh, we, we've looked at four different assays and, and uh, by four completely different groups that we've been working with. Um, and and uh, we, we initially thought that this makes sense because cannabinoids are known to have uh, very good immunomodulatory and anti-inflammatory effects. So patients that are very sick in the hospital, they might be able to benefit uh, by the uncontrolled release of cytokines. We know there's a cytokine storm that occurs. Uh, patients have acute lung injury. These are the ones that are in the hospital, the most severe patients. So they thought that cannabinoids in general might be helpful. But we were also very surprised to learn that uh, cannabinoids also have direct antiviral activity. Uh, and we replicated that in four different, different assays. So remdesivir is approved for emergency use in COVID-19. And we wanted to compare uh, cannabinoids with that activity. And what we've seen so far um, in, in a couple of assays where we put them head to head, depending on which group did the assays, this, this data that I show here, uh, the cannabinoid is a little bit less uh, active than remdesivir, but it clearly has very good activity. In another assay, it was a little bit better. And so we're, we're continuing to study this uh, we'll we'll uh, look at more combination effects with different drugs, and we'll, we want to get it into into uh, animals and then into patients. So this is another program that we're very excited about. We we think there's a real potential to uh, address the the uh, patients that that are very sick in hospitals with COVID nineteen. So that's that's sort of summarizes the uh, program that we've got going with Source. We're very excited about it at, at Pascal, and we we look forward to uh, continued collaborations. So thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Patrick, for walking everyone through that. Um, it's really interesting stuff. Obviously, kind of revolutionary for this industry, um, and obviously, will add a lot of value, uh, you know, to our clients as well as they continue to add cannabinoids to you know, their CPG products.